Hello everyone, my name is Garrett Oakamber and welcome back to the Diablo 3 Necromancer Beta. I have more than readily perfected my current build. Um, I've replaced my generator with the Frozen Scythe, and the reason for that is because it increases your attack speed by 1% for 5 seconds, max 15 stacks, so it's like having an extra Gogok of Swiftness. So, I mean, without the cooldown reduction, but your attack speed goes up by 15%, and they stack. Now, this affects your minions, as well as Gogok of Swiftness. Uh, some people think that attack speed doesn't affect your minions, but that is completely wrong. It does. <laughs> I have witnessed it. Um, whether or not that's enough to make this build even stronger, I'm not sure. But I have been relentlessly trying to pursue the, uh, what do you call that thing? <laughs> Rhymehard. I almost wanted to call it Chillrend again for some reason. I don't know why my brain thought Chillrend was a good idea. Um, since the last few episodes, they have actually changed some of the set items here. And I, I'm both a little bit saddened, but also glad at the same time. Why? Because the Necromancer got a much needed buff with damage when it comes to the actual, um, I don't want to call it a pet build. <laughs> with the, with the Bones of Rathmaset, it's more of an Army of the Dead build. Uh, but now people are, are refusing to use Army of the Dead, and I died. Yeah. Um, they're very squishy, and I'm starting to notice that at the higher torments. Uh, I've said that before, right? I've said that. I've said they're really squishy. And the only issue with this build is I have to get really close to apply stacks. Alright, there we go. Okay, okay. Finer things in life. Murder the crap out of Boglins. Boggets, sorry. Boglins. Jim Sterling, forgive me. Ow, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting torn to pieces. Um, they have changed a few things, so I'm not able to survive as much as I was. Even though we've got crazy damage, um, probably more than we had. At least I'm estimating that we have more damage. So, what exactly changed? Well, let me show you exactly anything that pertains to this set, at least. Uh, they've changed the Jessith uh, Arms set. Instead of giving us a uh, unconventional warfare to our army of the dead, which was really nice, um, they have changed it over to whenever your target of command skeleton dies, your skeletons are automatically command to attack a nearby target. However, that was already happening. So that part doesn't really interest me. It already seemed like they were automatically. Maybe they removed the init ability for them to target new targets. That's probably what happened. Um, but I have witnessed skeletons many times, and I haven't recorded where I'd kill something, and they would just zoom over to another target that I did not tell them to. That's fine, though. If they if they remove that from their initial ability, it makes the Jessif arms something you're gonna want if you're using command skeletons, no matter what build you're using, although preferably you want to use it with uh, Rothma. Um, then on top of that, uh, whenever your skeletons are commanded to attack a target, all of your minions deal 400% increased damage. That is the damage buff I was talking about. 400% increased damage is... It's not as much as you having a flat 400%. If you had a flat 400%, it would be vastly more than your minions. But giving your minions the ability to deal that makes a huge difference. So every attack they're making is more... Um, increases their damage against target by 50%. On top of that, they're dealing 400% increased damage with every one of those attacks, plus the 50% increased damage to that target. That's not bad. That's a really good bonus. Unfortunately, this makes Army of the Dead a little bit less powerful to some degree, uh, because it takes away, they took away the uh, unconventional warfare, making this relatively useless as much as powerful as it is truth be told i didn't notice uh army of the dead's unconventional warfare going off and i don't know if that's because the visual just doesn't stack or it was broken and they knew this so they decided to remove it um so the build is 
still pretty much the same. Um, I'm putting myself at more risk, though, by getting closer. And we're still using uh, Army of the Dead because I want to make Army of the Dead work. I mean, most of this set is Army of the Dead inclined. I mean, every time your minions attack, they lower the cooldown, so why not use it? There are alterations to this build. Some people discovered another version of this build that, you know, is good for them for also figuring it out that Frost is back. <laughs> Actually, why am I saying Frost is back? It was never good in Diablo 3. Now it is. Um, but some other people have discovered variations of this build where you can just, I don't know, just basically remove Army of the Dead, and I don't I don't really like that. It's most of this set makes Army of the Dead something you want to use. And I, I feel that it's almost a disgrace to the entire set if you just take it away. It's like, hey, yeah, you, you get uh, to use this ability more. You get a damage bonus with this ability. Your command skeletons do do a lot of damage. But they do so much more damage on top of the damage you're dealing with Army of the Dead, which Army of the Dead deals more damage. And this is kind of like a, a melee Mancer build. And I found out that actually Bone Armor can work quite well with this. Um, I still dislike it. I'm going to keep my, my bonuses for now. I've got Scythe of the Cycle, which, again, is a recommended, strangely enough, for exactly what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I'm going to keep this on for now, the Wisdom of Kalan. But I really want to try to make Rhymeheart a thing. Because they've been, they've been buffing this weapon. The whole time they've been buffing it for preparation for a new character. Because they knew there may be potential. But we are we're doing quite well. Doing quite well here. Um, I could be doing better, but it's just normal rifts. So I don't have to worry too much. I, I don't know which I like better, the Scythe build or the... Um, what do you call it, build? The little bone shards that I was using before. I mean, the bone shards were definitely more survivability. I've proven that works, but the scythe build it has more potential for more damage. It's because of the attack speed. The attack speed is crazy. And if Rhymeheart doesn't pay out, I can always switch over to Tasker and Theo, because the only reason I have the um, cold uh, gauntlets. Only reason is for Rhymeheart, and I don't currently have. I don't have Tasker and Theo either, either, and I'm sure that would do a crazy amount for my cause here. But I want to make Rhymeheart work some way, somehow. Relatively, our other skills are pretty much the same. We've got the skeleton uh, archers, which are integral. Integral. Uh, you, need, you need to double cold minions. There's no way around it. Um, one, because the skeletons that freeze seem to be the best anyways. And two, the archers increase your attack speed and your other minions' attack speed. Which is amazing. And my Army of the Dead was kind of wasted there, but whatever. I, I can see why people are moving away from Army of the Dead, only because it's so difficult to get working. It's just like, yeah, you have to do all this shit just to get it to function properly. And that can be a little irritating. I understand that. I also realized, like a dum-dum, my um, Devouring Aura, since I don't have the ability to gain life off of it, because it's just an aura, uh, the life bonus from this is kind of useless. The essence, though, still comes into play, so I'm debating about switching out a Devouring Aura, and I think I actually will do that. Because um, at this point, I mean... I seem to be doing quite well. And if I take it away, let's say I want uh, cannibalize. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll do cannibalize. Or, or actually, do I want increases my life? I don't know. No, it's only two seconds. That's not a lot. So cannibalize is probably the best. Uh, I was thinking maybe the one that increases my life overall would be a good idea, because it makes you even tougher, but that's a limited time in the middle of a fight. 
And I died because I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at my health. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> Funny, I was looking at my health and I get one-shotted. Okay. Well, the good news is we are getting more of a benefit from the corpses. We're just not automatically sucking them up now. Which is something we've got to consider. Uh, but that increases the life we get. From each corpse, which is great. Something I wasn't really utilizing as much. Probably should have been. But whatever. Still a learning process. Ow. Okay. Got these guys. I wish there was a thing where it gave you armor as you did it, because then this devouring uh, aura, this devour, sorry, devour itself would be far more useful when it came to any bone armor builds. I think we're actually doing a lot better since I decided to switch over my uh, devour ability. As strange as it sounds, I mean, I'm not automatically picking up Essence, but... As I'm spamming it, I'm gaining life back. So it's like having a constant life regen that's a little bit more proactive, a little bit quicker. Um, again, a Necromancer seems to be very difficult to find a proper synergy. A lot of the other classes in the game have very clear intentions. The Necromancer does not appear to do, suffer from the same, I don't know, standardized formula. Yeah, I think I'm doing a lot better now because of that one switch. I was just like, well, yeah, maybe it is better, considering I was doing it the wrong way before. The aura, as cool as it is to have it automatically, doesn't appear to really do much for us. Nice thing about this sight, though, is when you get right up in the face of enemies, it attacks multiple enemy targets. So you don't actually... You don't get a slow trickle like you do with the Gogok. The Gogok is very slow. In fact, I'd almost say I could replace the Gogok at some point. The only reason I have it is because of Army of the Dead. I can see people's reasoning behind not wanting to use Army of the Dead for its cooldown. Also, the Ring of the Zodiac doesn't really appear to do much with the Necromancer, at least not with this build. And you'd kind of think that Army of the Dead would do more. What I think they should do is remove the cooldown, but make Army of the Dead cost a shit ton of essence. Like, I'm talking... 50 essence, or, or maybe it says like half your essence, so every time you use it, you can basically only use it twice in a row. And I think that would actually be a fair compromise, because I'm not noticing that Army of the Dead is as powerful as it appears to be. At least the version I'm using is the blood version, which is supposedly supposed to be the most powerful. It does damage over time, so it's like an extended bleed. Oh, I'm not doing any damage, I gotta get all my minions out. That's my problem, I keep forgetting to bring all my skeletons out. I said before in previous videos, like a week ago, that you need to actually... A week ago from when I recorded, not... This is gonna be much later. I mean, you get these videos out a lot sooner, but... Um... Yeah, it's... it's me trying to... find things to do with this. Army of the Dead is like a... At least this rune is like a glorified uh, bleed. I guess that's what I was trying to say before I lost my train of thought. I'm still kind of waking up here, but... That's okay. Oh, and see, this is a problem. If I can't gain my stuff back, I can't summon minions. If I can't summon minions, I can't deal damage. There we go. But the only weakness with this is the fact that it puts you up very close, and bone armor doesn't appear to do that much for us. It does work with this build only because we're at close proximity. Okay. 
we can, uh... There we go. There we go. Once things start dying, we're doing good. Um, puts us at close proximity, so it forces us to be able to crowd control the shit out of them. And this, um, Army of the Dead does work quite well with this because of the slow trickle of damage and its close range. It's an alternate melee build that uses minions. The more targets we hit, the faster our minions attack. It's pretty awesome. Oh, Two-handed sword. Okay, that works. Oh, wow. Okay, mace. I would really like to see a one-handed sword, though. Please, game. Please be nice. Okay, we got this messy... Yeah, I died. <laughs> we got this messy, messy situation. Why did I stand in that? I probably shouldn't play Diablo when I'm tired. You know, normally I would, though. That's the weird thing, because when I'm not recording... I'm just playing it, I'm just relaxing. This game can be both relaxing and just absolutely horrifyingly infuriating at times. Maybe I'm trying to get a good measure of what I can do when I'm tired in this game. Yeah, I can see if I can make the Necromancer make sense when I'm tired, through tired eyes. They say your best ideas come when you're sleepy. And I find that to be relatively true, but unfortunately, the game requires some focus, and I did not have focus, and I died a few times. Okay, I thought he was just dropping legendaries for some reason. That was weird. There. Got some extra crap. Let's take it home to Auric. <sighs> I, I just want the character to come out already. It... it it does a little bit, it feels like I don't want to play this because I know everything I've done here is a waste <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> I mean, the most I'm going to get out of this, the most that you're going to get out of this video is that you get to see it before it comes out. But playing it, bone spirit damage is increased by 90 seconds for every second it's active. I could see that be really strong for a long range build, um, but we're not going to be switching builds. Um, your corpse explosion deals 96% increased damage for one second. Stack them to five times. So that's kind of like... It's kind of like the hammered in build. That'd be pretty nice to have. Um, I keep getting that damn belt. That's the third time I've gotten that belt. For some reason it wants to give you wizard items. I don't know why. I don't know what the purpose behind that is. Maybe that the necromancer is secretly coded as the wizard and the game just thinks that you're playing the wizard. Which is awful, by the way, because it means every time you go to... What am I doing? Every time you go to play the Necromancer and items drop, there's like a 80% probability that some of those items might switch over. <laughs> okay, we've got stuff, and I can't do anything with that. That's great. Can I get the sword I want, please? I just want to try it out. Maybe it isn't any good. I just want to try it out. I really do. Okay. No, of course not. Okay. And we don't have any more, obviously, so we can't re-roll the other ones I have in the stash. That's wonderful. Well, I tried, didn't I? <laughs> okay. That's cool. Um, so again, the, uh... The build I'm using util utilizes the Grim Scythe. Which, it really works, it's just, I think it would work better with Tasker and Theo as opposed to what I'm trying to do. Whereas the long range one would probably work better. But I still don't know how useful Rhymeheart will be when I get it. The whole purpose of having Frostburn is to make sure that when I have Rhymeheart, 50% of that time, enemies are getting frozen. And I deal a little bit more damage, which is nice. Um, but... But your uh, this one here, the secondary skills deal and 300% increased damage. That's pretty good. 
as long as I have the bone armor skill, and it now stacks with Jesseth Arms. It seems like they were trying to make this a thing. They wanted this synergy to exist. Is it better than Unconventional Warfare? I mean, it's debatable. The damage of the minions is great, because the minions are even more of a threat. But you lose a whole rune portion for Army of the Dead. So it's it's kind of like a, a mixture. I mean, it's definitely more readily available, because minions are always out. It's like, I just summon a bunch of skeleton mages, and there they are. They, they have all these bonuses. Every time I hit with bone armor, bam, they get extra damage and all that shit. Um, but I am thinking for the Grim Scythe build with Skeleton Mage, Command Skeleton, all this stuff, this, this Frost build is going to work a lot better if I have, if I have myself, um, the Tasker and Theo plus Scythe of the Cycle. There's another item though. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. There's another item that could potentially work with this build even better. And it is... I know what it looks like. I don't know the name. Ah, there it is. Bone Ringer. The, dam the damage bonus of Command Skeletons increases by 30% per second they spend attacking the same target. So that essentially makes Command Skeletons Rift Guardian Destroyers uh, towards the end. That That's great. Um, however, they can die. So I don't know if it applies to every skeleton that exists so that means if all your skeletons end up dead or they keep dying one after another one after another the longest lived are going to take the most damage and then they're going to die which means they no longer have the bonus i don't know if that's the truth or not if it is that really sucks and the item is just it looks nice but it's not as it is um their damage against the target that's commanded it goes up by a flat 50 percent. it doesn't increase after that until you keep, you know, attacking them with whatever you have. It doesn't go up per second. Um, that makes it so that their damage incrementally goes higher, though, if you have it. It's just, again, if they die and they lose the bonus, which we're not really clear on that, then that really sucks. So I don't know. I don't know if that's the case, but either way, there's a gem. Uh, there's a gem to augment that either way. Uh... It's Bane of the Stricken. Each attack you make against an enemy increases the damage it takes from your attacks by 0.80% at level 0. So, no matter what, even if that skeleton bonus would wear out if they die using that item, um, Bane of the Stricken in one of your rings or amulets is going to do its job no matter what. Because you are still attacking them. Your minions are an appendage of yourself. They take all your stats and they, you know, they, bait, well, not all your stats. They take your damage, they, they take your attack speed, so every time they attack anyways, it would be going up by a small amount. That would just increase it by 30% per second. If they die, then it's gone for them. But then the new ones have to start over. But that's still a lot. That's still a lot. It's still a lot of damage. Per second? That's pretty crazy. Um... So there, there is some hope. I also changed over to Swift Harvesting uh, just because it gives me an, a flat increase to um, the Grim Scythe. It only increases the Grim Scythe's attack speed initially, but it makes it that easy, that much easier to stack uh, the bonus. Plus, every time my skeletons hit, I'm gaining more attack speed. It, it's pretty cool. It's pretty nice. Um, I just don't know for certain if this will be a strong build late game it's hard to survive as it is but once i start you know gaining stacks or whatever i'm kicking ass um otherwise it's a little difficult i can definitely push higher in the rifts it's just the survivability and even at twelve thousand toughness i mean I, I i gotta max out some of these gems i have to get ancients ancients are my issue i only have one and that's proving to be a problem. Let's, uh, no, we can't. We just, we didn't reroll. Damn it. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have, uh, gone to Cadella. I should have tried to get, um, more of this set and see if any of it comes out. And I mean, I'm not sure how I feel about Requiem Sarah Plate because I could still get a shit ton more damage if I got rid of the Ring of Royal Grandeur. If I switch over to, where the hell did it go? There it is. Convention of Elements, for instance. 
I get a lot more damage. You know, I actually think we're gonna we're gonna try that right now because it's yeah. See, and and if I do that, I get the benefit of this. So we're going to no, we're not gonna salvage it because we might want to use it. <laughs> we're gonna take these gems out for free because that's amazing. Um, so there, we've got a better ring in general. We've got a better curious in general. We don't have the bonuses from this, though. The extra essence in life, so we're going to suffer a bit when it comes to essence. Um, so I'm going to have to spam this a lot more. Uh, yeah. So we lost, I think we lost a bit of... Yeah, we lost a little bit of toughness. Um, this ring is got a lot more stuff on it. A little bit of attack speed went missing. Our critical hit chance did go up. You know, I could... Vitality, armor, life per second. Let me see if I can re-roll something on this. I don't think we need all this armor. 12% life. Might as well take the 12% life for now. So, when our Convention of Elements hits Frost, we gain 186% increased damage to Frost. Um, that is huge. <laughs> that is huge. Let's try this out. Very slow start, because I had no, um, had absolutely no essence to begin with. Okay, this is going to be one of those rifts, huh? Yeah. Okay. I got this. And see, if they kill them too fast, that's fantastic, because then I don't have to actually worry about stacks. Any attack speed I gain from the Scythe ability is just bread and butter. Now, see, yeah, I'm noticing a huge damage increase. Like, once it hits Frost, they just start murdering. And that does make a lot of sense. I mean, I kind of like the way I had it before. And we're gonna know what the best builds are eventually. People are gonna find ways of really squeezing out the most DPS, the most of anything they can do with this. But I think I'll be playing this for a while just because it seems that when they hit that frost element, bam, everything dies. It's all these stacking damage bonuses just makes them hit so freaking hard. And mind you, again, this is without Tasker and Theo. Um, this is without Rhymeheart with the build as is. I'm curious to see what both of those items would do for this, but for now, I gotta work with what I have. <laughs> I should have I should have made a PTR copy, but I wanted to play this fresh. People were saying, yeah, if, if you play the Necromancer beta, make sure you copy your account over to the PTR. And it's like, I didn't I didn't do it. I know I should have, probably. I have all those items in my bank. I just didn't want to do it. Um, so I'm going to end this video here. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments below. Oh, you know, I say that, but I don't know how long the uh, event's going on, so... If you'd like to see more, I would like to hear from you. And if I can't do more of the beta, I will definitely be doing a little bit when the Necromancer goes live. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you later.